This is the Amp Hour Podcast, recorded January 27th, 2015. Episode 234, Hiring Hypercatalectic Help Help. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. Live from DesignCon no. 2015. <laughs> yeah, well, live from, live, from, uh, live from a pricey yet... Uh, best, mod- uh, 240 modest- buck a night, Best Western. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> man, folks out here, I don't know. <laughs> you describe this as a shitty place. No, it wasn't <laughs> shitty. That was well. We we were scared it was going to be shitty while driving up, but I mean, it's, it's really not bad. It's, right. it's it's very modest, but it's it's you know it's not bad. It's it's um yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. right. And it's two hundred forty bucks a night. That, Welcome that, to Silicon Valley. Yeah, right. You know, and and yeah. we were kind of talking about it as we were driving through the villages to uh, not the villages, but like some of the. You know, like the living areas here too, and it's just like, man, thinking about how much it costs to live here, and it's just everything's real spaced out. It's just, it seems very mm. different to me that I'm not sure I would be as. Uh, it's just a different way of living, you know. Like I'm, I'm used well, to the burbs and everything. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm used to suburbia, you know. Right. So and, and expensive suburbia, right? So it's somewhere in well, between. Well, the mid mid price suburbia is what I'm at, but my house is worth a million dollars. So <laughs> right, that's what I meant. That's you it's know, mid price, yeah, but it's exactly. still it's still expensive <laughs> in the global scale. When we started the show, it was probably worth uh oh, seven hundred, maybe. Right. No, no, it wouldn't even be that. It wouldn't yeah. even be that. It was probably worth six hundred. That's crazy. When we started the show, yeah. So nuts. Hmm. Good old Sydney, not getting any bigger. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I think it is up. more expensive than uh, San Fran. I, uh, yeah, those well, are always Silicon up Val- there. Well, uh, San Fran's more expensive than Silicon Valley, isn't it? Because Silicon Valley is usually not, you know. Silicon Valley doesn't really have, like there's uh, San Jose, uh-huh. of course, but I don't think anyone actually lives in like the heart of it. Do they? They all sort of live out in. No, the, people live there too. I mean, like, there, there, there's yeah, people everywhere maybe. here. That's the thing. Like, it's it's. I, I don't know. I've stayed down in San Jose before, and, and there's some nice areas there too. And it's. I mean, like, it's. I mean, that's the thing. It's just like, it's just people everywhere. This is what I'm not used to, right? I, I live in, in the, right. the 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 scarce suburbs outside of Cleveland, and you know, and it's <laughs> there's no tech people, and it's just it's just a very different experience for me. And it's not bad. Yep. It's just it's just different than what I'm used to. Just like right. if I moved to Sydney, it'd be different. So, but paying oh, two forty no, night for a hotel, Sydney would probably be very, very similar to. Uh, yeah, not the house Cleveland, prices, buddy. I suspect. No, no, not for the, the price house of a prices. VCR. Remember, yeah, not the price of a VCR. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So, mm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more talking about the uh, CBD side of things, like the central business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. District. I don't. When I was in San Jose, I don't recall. Uh you know, seeing too many like apartment buildings, but then again, I wasn't really paying attention. Right, right. Too mm. busy going to see the yeah. HP garage, which I will not be seeing again this trip. But oh well. <laughs> <laughs> and I was too busy staying in my expensive hotel, which was um, attached to the McHenry Convention Convention Center. Yeah. Is that where you're at? No, we're at the Santa Clara. Uh, it's up. It's a little bit oh, further right. north. Yeah, Again, I, I, I really don't know where I am. Uh, I'm just kind of right. following. You know, I'm kind of in that mode where I'm just following Google's directions and like, no, okay, <laughs> right, go yeah, over yeah. here now, go over there now. Because <laughs> usually they put you up in the – the reason they have these conferences at um, – they usually have like huge, big hotels attached to these conference centers. And, you yeah. know, usually the done thing is you stay in the hotel because, you, you know, it's got like a thousand rooms or whatever. You right, know? They're, right, they're right, usually right. massive hotels. Yeah, well, that attached. one was 350, so, you know. <laughs> oh right! What the company's paying? What's the problem? I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't book it. So, but it's, it's not uh, a big deal. It really it. isn't. Yeah. It's, I mean, again, it's like you know, I'm going to be out doing stuff and on the show floor, and by the time I get back here, I'm going to be passing out, just exhausted. Right. So, you got to be careful what they book you. You know, you got to double check. I can remember I was working at a company, and they sent me to Melbourne to go to a. Uh, it was the PCB design um, course. Mm-hmm. You know, like a, the certification course and um yeah and oh okay yeah i got my ticket here we go i got my hotel yeah okay sounds all right and uh yeah it was fine it was nearby and within walking distance great 
And I decide, oh, I'll just double check, you know, what this place is like, you know. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And it's a backpackers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, like, that's like. Well, you're the great well, rate. See, you, if you the, don't mind five yeah. bunkmates, you're you're in good shape, right? <laughs> yeah. You meet and some interesting the characters. And who booked it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> and she profusely apologized. You know, she, they book it through agents in the agent, yeah. you know. So they sort of trust the agent, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And, yeah, <laughs> some, <laughs> somehow they book me up. <laughs> Backpackers. Yeah. Well, Oops. You can be sure if you're at a hotel, there's probably a Aussie traveling somewhere, right? You guys are. Yeah, right. You guys yeah, are yeah. world travelers. You're everywhere. <laughs> we are. We are. Yeah. Like I think ninety percent of us have owned passports, whereas like ten yeah, percent of Americans own passports. I think passports. it's eighteen. It's... Eighteen last I heard. So, eighteen. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh jeez, yeah. you're getting adventurous there. Yeah. Yeah. Look out. Well, Look out, world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, what have you been up to? Uh, well, are you uh, drunk again? As I tweeted, <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I did. I did get a message from Dave today that was like, "Hey, so you ready to record?" And I'm like, I, I got it as I'm like carrying stuff into a convention center. I'm like, "Oh my god, <laughs> it's three hours earlier here." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, I was not drunk. Uh, no, I was just uh, right. furiously carrying all the gear. Yeah, all that crap. So uh, yeah, it's uh, you know mostly website stuff and getting that up on the, um, getting getting everything set up for this conference. I don't know what to expect. Website stuff. How do you set? What do you carry to set up website stuff? Uh, you know, there's displays and there's like uh, boxes of t-shirts and well, and if people want t-shirts, right, I'll be there. swag. Okay. Yeah, swag, and then you know like big monitors to show people stuff and. So, right. you know, just carrying stuff in from well, the car. Yeah, yeah but you nothing. didn't have to transport those yourself, did you? Did you, like, check those in? You had to do the big 40-inch monitor or? No, yeah, we decided not doing that. I, that it's just this weird. This whole thing is a weird. I, I can't imagine how CES would be. And maybe, I, I don't know if we talked about this last week even. I'm kind of blurry on everything these days. But <clears throat> it's just like there's just like this huge industry around it. And I, I, I don't like it at all. So this might be my one and only conference. We'll see. But I don't know. It's uh this is your last conference. <laughs> I said oh, first as, and last. as in as in as in being on the stand. Yeah, well, being we'll on see. the stand, you mean yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's know. not fun. I don't. Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, so I'm looking forward to some things. Though. Like, so I did get to walk through the 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 show floor today, and you know, like like because it's like so design con's kind of meant for like like high speed design stuff. So a lot like all of the scope makers are there, and they all have like tons of gear on the floor. And so that's going to be cool. You know, on breaks, I'll be able to walk around and check out some of that stuff. Again, not not like I know what a lot of that, you know, like a lot of that super high speed stuff I've never done. So I don't mm. even know what I'm looking yeah. at. But I don't know. I was going to ask you about this, though. Like, So when you go to when you go to a show, wherever it is, what do you what do you you know what you walk up to a, a, a show stand? Yeah. Say it's a scope stand. What is the first thing you do, though? I mean, like, because I think I about it. the scope. Yeah, but like, do you like just play through <laughs> the menus, or like, do you? Because there's no like, there, are there demos? I, I don't know. I, I've they looked they at some almost of these. always have uh, demo boards attached, you know, and they might have, you know, uh, for a scope, for example, they might have a a video camera which generates a video signal. That's always a good oh, test of a scope, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. to show the, you know, the the display and stuff like that that it's analog like, and yeah, so you know, okay. they'll have that hooked up, and yeah, you just go up and fiddle. And then, yeah, I mean, I guess you know? I, I don't, I don't know, like, but like, I don't know, like digging through menus, like that doesn't really, like, I, I feel like so much of that stuff is, you know, you don't really know what you're looking for until you're. <laughs> I feel well, like, you I either feel like have best... an interest in scopes or you don't. Well, I mean, no, but if but you I have feel like... an interest in scopes, you're going to go up and play with the menus. Yeah, no, I get that. But I'm just saying, there. like, like the time when I know that I need to scope the most <laughs> is when I'm, I'm at my bench and I'm like. Holy crap! I need to see more of the signal. You know, like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like that's when I should be sold. Any scope? scope. Give me any scope. Yeah. <laughs> anything faster? Anything better? Give me everything. I'll pay anything. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know. And so there's a lot of like uh, like high speed connector folks as well, and they're in their sessions. But mm. I don't, I don't know. We'll right. see. Uh, I'll poke around, probably post some mm. pictures on Twitter and stuff like that. So the stands that always attract you in i think is the ones that have practical demos yeah you know, they've, right. they've got a robot you know if they've got an industrial control board you know yeah, like right. a little like a pc 104 or bloody what arduinos these days or whatever right 
Went, oh, I was a boy, PC 104. Anyway, <laughs> they, they, they would have like a cabinet and they'd have like 20 different industrial boards and they'd all be behind the glass cabinet. Like, you can't even fondle the bloody things, right? Yeah. You can't even pick them up and have a look and, you know, read the chip numbers, right? So they're all in the glass display cabinet. They're like, the, they're the boring as batshit stands. So I'll usually pass those, but if somebody's got their demo board out and they've got it hooked up and it's controlling a robot arm, yeah, you know, right, right, bet right. your it's ass I'm going to go up and it's have making a stuff blink, right? it's making yeah, stuff right. do it. Whatever, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, we'll see what, I mean, I've, I've been to, like, I was at Electronica too, and it, like some of that stuff, like, uh, I don't know, I think I talked about that too. It's, hmm. a lot of that was very businessy stuff, so hopefully this is a little bit more on the on the right. hands-on kind of things, but it's. So uh, what is your stand like? Describe, and who is the stand for is it like a parts io specific stand yeah yeah, or yeah. Is specifically a... for that yeah right okay so it's yeah. branded parts io it's not yep, branded yep and it's basically whatever. like you know answering questions getting people to try out the search if they haven't before that right. kind of thing so it's uh, basically a bunch of dorks like you standing there with a bunch of computers and big screens and yeah right exactly that's yeah right. that's i mean I, I'm we really there have to... free swag we have free yeah. swag <laughs> please stop by our stand yeah <laughs> actually the one thing that i did that i thought i was very proud of myself on this uh Handing so like handing we were talking about handing out T-shirts, but like I was like, yeah. well, we got to hand out polo shirts because I always, I don't know about you, maybe you were allowed to wear T-shirts, but like I wasn't allowed to wear T-shirts to work at older jobs at other jobs I've had. Really? So I was always oh, like, no, hell no. Oh yeah, okay. Screw well. that. Uh, <laughs> I've always worn a T-shirt. Oh, well, well, no, I, 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 I went through a polo shirt phase once. Yeah, I mean that, that's always you know, kosher. But, the, it, the it wasn't worked, because right? it's a requirement. You know. Yeah, but it's all it's always like okay, right? You're usually safe with that. Again, I, I used, to wear, I used <laughs> really? to wear tank tops. I used to wear tank tops. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and and sh- they uh, they actually pulled me aside once, you know, and they uh-huh. said, you know, hey, what's with the tank top? And I said, I like wearing tank tops. And they went, mm, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that was the end of it. <laughs> 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 when I lay on my boards, I like hot, to show right? off the It's the middle the of summer, show. and we were, <laughs> and, and we were, you know, my my office used to be in like the upstairs under the hot tin roof, you know. So it was, you know, it was it, it got bloody warm. So you're damn yeah, right, I'm yeah. going to wear a tank top. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, at that point too, you know, like if you don't have the air conditioning set right, I mean. Yeah, yeah. In Cleveland, it'd be, why are you wearing two sweaters? You know, nah, all right. <laughs> Chris, you're looking extraordinarily plush today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness. I don't know. So, I mean, like trade shows. Like, so this is. I mean, obviously, this is an interesting experience for me because I'm on the other side. Like, usually, I torture people at trade show stands. I try to ask them questions and you know throw them off their game. So it'll be, yep. yeah, you know, people will try and throw me off my game. That's fine. I, I don't really. <laughs> but it's it's nice. Hopefully. Hey, yeah, <laughs> have you ever walked up to a, a stand and they go, can we help you? And have you ever gone, probably, and you ever had a look at them and go, this guy's a freaking just a marketing wanker. And you yeah. and you go, probably not. No, I feel that, that I am that marketing wanker right now. Like that's, that's my fear. You know, like I, I don't or, think. I'm... Or, or you can read it on their badge, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, marketing, sure. you know, like or, or whatever, you know, yeah. and it's like all their, you know, sometimes I have like human resources people on the stand or whatever. And you go, oh, really? Probably Oof, not. Yeah. You know, yeah. like. Yeah, do, you know, if the stands you, how do you get engineers back there? You can just <laughs> you can get a sandwich behind a curtain. Maybe you can bring them out for a little bit, show them off. Yeah. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Goodness. I was thinking about the. Uh, I was thinking about my 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 work here. Right. This is I, this is the last I'll say about the site for now. I mean, like, hmm. honestly, <laughs> here's here's my plea to people. I feel like. I took one for the team. I know that sounds really stupid and uh, uh, really <laughs> stupid, right? Explain. But like, I I want to fix this stuff. Like, I know that it's like I'm not doing hardware like all the time now, but like this thing needs to be fixed. That's why I took the job in the first place. And uh, right. So yeah, I mean that's why that's why I'm actually interested in all this stuff. I mean, what do you I, mean it needs to be fixed? It's brand new. No, I mean like it's the whole like concept. searching for parts. Oh, like it's not you're easy. talking about the whole paradigm. Yeah, I mean like it's just not mm. easy. Fi- like finding new parts is hard. That's why I took this job. Is like that sucks. I hate that. You know, like well, it's always going to be hard. You it's can just always make gonna be hard. It maybe right, right. a little bit less hard. Exactly. Suck you know, less. You're, Sucks you're not going to suddenly day. make it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you're not saving the world. No, of course not. I mean, I'm I'm not Elon Musk. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
someday. So what does your badge say? What is your title? What's it got on there? What is my title? I think it's product manager. I don't know. It's, that's my, oh, I think, my grown. official. Yeah, it's pretty. Grown. Yeah. yeah. What a wank. Uh, well, yeah. Chris is boring. <laughs> Whatever. I build, I'm building hardware now too, man. So oh, I'm, cool. I'm balancing it all out. That's that's my big thing. What sort of hardware? Yeah. Well, the the contextual electronics courses. Oh, is, right. You're doing it with yeah. contextual electronics. So I mentioned course. that last week. But yeah, of so course. basically, yep. uh, uh, we need to kind of get up and running in terms of just kind of getting people started. So uh, we we actually switched over. We're just going to do uh, a current source uh, layout. So like, obviously, you've done videos on this stuff. Other people have built current sources to high heaven. It's not. Mm -hmm. hard to build one or it's not hard to find one online but you know just to Mm. get people used to the flow and building stuff and you know that can be a big thing right when you're getting started sometimes you need to start halfway you don't need to start right at the beginning so we're going to start from a schematic and find some parts and and, uh, yeah do a layout and order a board and quick turnaround that's the focus awesome yeah well hopefully i'm I'm gonna be doing more of that soon oh yeah so uh what's going on are you uh are you allowed to talk about anything? Or? Um, no, yeah, okay. I think so. By the time oh, yeah. this uh, episode goes live, yeah, yeah. I think um, everyone will have been informed. Yes, I have found somebody hey, to um, hey. start. Dave has a know, minion. And, yay, <laughs> mini me. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> mini me. And, well, that's great, um, man. Yes, yeah, um, and not starting for uh, a few weeks, uh, end of February yeah. or whatever, because okay. they've got other... Other commands. It'll take me that much time to sort things out and just get everything uh, set up and all sorts of stuff. Because there's tons of little things to you know get ready to make um, uh, to make their work efficient. Like the last thing I want to do is get them in here and then be completely unorganized and have to waste half my time shuffling them work. You know. Yeah. So, right. right. Yeah, like I need to get, you know, I need to go into every site that I get email from, you know, all my shopping cart stuff, read, get oh, email, yeah, yeah. You know, set up new emails accounts so that all the email then gets directed to them, you know, instead of me for all that sort of jazz. Right. And, and, you know. So you get to reclaim and, your uh, inbox too. That's nice. That's, that's, yeah, uh, yeah. That's powerful. Yeah, man. that'll be awesome. Yeah. I know. Totally. Dave might actually answer so, my emails at some point now. <laughs> 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 My humble apologies if you do send me an email and I don't yeah, answer. Who, me or anyone? Try I, to. You mean anyone? No, anyone. anyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah. I think people realize Your one you're... usually, Google, like, you know, highlights yours. I go to the top. And, you know, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this wanker's uh, complaining again, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Better shut laughs> blah, him blah, up, blah. Yeah. We have a show. He might forget it, but we have a show. <laughs> <laughs> Although I've got minus chip printer in there, you know, so if there's oh, any, yeah. Yeah, of anything course. regarding of course. that, it's just, yeah, <laughs> right instantly. <into> the trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't send you stuff like that anymore. <laughs> but there was something on the list about it. Mm. There was something on the Reddit. Yeah, was, was there, there something there? Someone, I had, you know, actually. I, I saw it or I read no, it No, it was a tweet. Someone sent us a tweet about that. And there was, That's and right. It's this UK company, yeah, and yeah. they've actually been printing. They've been doing it for a while, and basically they, they had a news item about uh, they're about to cross 100 million transistors or de- – I'm not sure if it was transistors or devices no, that they it printed. No, it was 7400. No, no, level. I know, but total devices they've actually printed out by now. I think it was, oh, right. it was either devices okay. or transistors. Like they, That was basically like the, the, the threshold they had crossed as the – you know, this is the news item. Yeah, but it doesn't they make were them useful. Seven, right. Well, that's the thing. It was like 7-4 series logic, le- uh, you know, right. amount – so yeah, which we which has if people don't well you should no if you're listening to the amp hour it's got you know a few dozen transistors maybe a few yeah. hundred you know right, kind of right level. for the most um, the most you know, complicated a, maybe like yeah. the timer chips or something like that you yeah know, like yeah that. yeah the most complicated would have a couple hundred gates you know yeah. so yeah. right yeah and so I mean like hmm. and that's cool I mean it's cool right obviously we we have that discussion on here I think it's anytime printed comes up uh, usually people. They get, it catches their ear and they say, Chris Chris wants to use this against Dave. And eh, it's, it's not bad. Uh, but, and which uh, is fine. Go for it. Because uh, my argument has always been and will always be that you can print a million transistors on a chip at home. You haven't packaged it. You haven't tested it. You haven't qualified yeah, right, right, right. it. You haven't, right? And you can't beat the price of the uh, the 100,000 parts at DigiKey for a dollar a pop. Yeah. So when you've done that, yeah, come well, and talk you know, to me. Whatever. Which will not whatever. happen in the next 20 years. 
I don't know what's going to happen in the next 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> we'll still be doing this bloody show. <laughs> when I was a boy. When I, when I was a 30-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, God. Uh, we'll have the same arguments anyway. 20 years from now. Yeah, Yeah, we will. Yeah. Why do people still listen to this show? It's just the same old <laughs> shit every week. <laughs> Well, you know, it's going to loop back around at some point, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> goodness. What? What is this? No. I what? don't believe it. What? This actually isn't on our subreddit. This is on the electronic subreddit. Sorry, I just saw this. Right. Okay, I don't, yeah. What is it? The Art of Electronic 3rd Edition. Oh, yes, Cambridge yes, Press yes. Is... Pre-order yes. April 2015. Have... No way. I have pre-ordered one. I have pre-ordered one. You have? I'm getting it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude, mm. this, it's real. And, I, well, it apparently it's real. And apparently Lamore has seen one because her quote, she really? uh, she's actually quoted. She's actually, if you read the Amazon page, she's actually quoted along with, um, uh, well, this is, uh, people are questioning this because along with Jim Williams, he put a quote in there as well. And as somebody pointed well. out, Jim Williams has been dead almost two years. I think, or it's getting yeah. But this book's been worked on for probably ten years. You yeah, know? I know. So, like, yeah. <laughs> how old of a copy have they actually seen? You know, or have, oh, right, right, yeah. right, right. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, because there, there's always an update well, on the forum. Well, this is the first there's, I've there's, seen. There's, of an there's actual... one guy. Oh yeah, no, this is the first time I've uh-huh. seen it. But there's one guy in the forum who apparently uh, he always emails our uh, win. Hill and Win Hill always replies to him about the update. So every you know three months he emails him and then he reports back to the forum. So we've got sort of like a central person who contacts Win, you know, on the forum and updates. And and the last we heard was that oh you know yeah it's still going through copy uh, copy editing or whatever you know blah 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 or we're starting on the index or something or you know <laughs> something like that. Um, and yeah, so it looked like, oh yeah, it's another three years away, you know. And then no, all of a sudden, wham bam, here it is on Amazon. <laughs> pre order, so I damn right I'm gonna hit that pre order button. Um so yeah. Who do I have to sleep with to actually yeah. get a pre release copy? Does that does that uh does that mean you have to pay up front or no? I don't know how it works. I haven't checked if my credit card's been I I don't think so. I think Amazon charges your card when it ships. I think that's how Amazon works, but I don't use it enough to know. Yeah, because I know, like, I know that a lot of crowdfunding campaigns, like, there's at least in the, I think in the states, there's a rule that you can't have more than thirty a charge thirty days out, and so that's, yeah. What? No, that's the entire point of crowdfunding campaigns. You get all the money up front, and then you can take a year to actually ship, if you want. That's the yeah. whole point of crowdfunding. Um. Well, I don't know. I th- but I think that's that's still you don't get Trust charged me, until I've the used it. <laughs> the campaign tips, though, right? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Sorry. Yes. Until the campaign tips. Yes. Yes. The campaign must tip. So yes, huh. that's how it works. Well, I think. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Kickstarter is like uh, anyway. It's details. It gets charged when the campaign finishes and it's tipped or oh. whatever. Whereas possible, yeah, so that's when the Australian yeah. possible one. You actually get the money when it tips. As soon as you hit your right. threshold and it hasn't finished yet, you get the money. So, yeah, I think that's how it works. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that a lot of that is the, you know, just how how the the countries are different, right? I mean, so maybe maybe just the payment rules are different or something weird like that. So that that might be it. But I'm pretty sure in the right. States, at least, it's it's the 30 days thing. Okay. So, uh, okay, so you're going to hire this, uh, you have this hire, new hire coming on, and uh, so any big plans to start with, or, I mean, are you going to wait a little bit and then jump into uh, stuff, or what's, what's... Oh, what's... we don't know, well, <laughs> don't know yet. We really have to get together and, um, you know, figure out exactly how we're going to do things and what we're going to do and things like that, but um, immediate priority, I guess, is to, um, well, one of the immediate ones is to, um, yeah, get them working on some hardware um nice be at the uh projects that you know my list of dead projects um get them to 
you know, start working on those again, i.e. building up our prototypes and things like that so that I can um, start, you know, testing things and stuff like that. Potentially, like, building um, hardware for videos. Ooh, um, okay. You know, because people go, oh, well, why don't I... Uh, why you know I want to test the chip out. Why don't I just lay out a board and and build something up and and do a video about it? Yeah, I'd love to, but you know that's a whole week's work, right? So I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, it's it's right. really difficult to do that. Yeah. So whereas now I've got someone else who can work on that in the background, and you know it might take a month, for example, like they might start like say there's a new chip that comes on the market, and I want to play with it, want to do a video with it. Right, and we might want to build up some hardware or something, then yeah, they can you know lay out a simple board for it, send that away, get it made cheaply, and that might take a couple of weeks, right, and then when it gets back, they can build it up, and then I can do a video on it, and then that's you know um taken all the sort of grunt work of actually you know building up stuff like that away from me so that I can focus on doing videos of actual electronics, hey, all right, that's for great, a change. Man. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because electronics takes time. People don't realize this, you know? Um, well, some I people... I think the people that are doing well, it, yeah. Well, they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm sure everyone understands that, but they just are so used to my frequent content yeah. that they don't realize that, you know, no, I can't spend... I can't be working on five different projects and at the same time and still produce content. And Yeah. You know, you know the thing that always, that always that continually gets me is just like the... And I think this is kind of the 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 underlying factor in a lot of a lot of the strife that we see in the electronics industry is just like mm-hmm. the, the just the delay not the delays because delays implies negativity even in a best case scenario there's just the logistics of like shipping stuff and you know like oh, oh I, yeah I want a part and then I have a part and then I get a board and then I send out for the board the board comes back and yeah. it's like yeah best case scenario you got you line everything up and you still got a two week wait unless you're paying you know hundreds of dollars totally. in rush charges and yeah stuff. well then yeah that's right you can even do it the normal way and you know if you use Osh Park or something like that how long does it take to get your boards what is it three weeks or something uh, I think it's two yeah. stateside I know that the has okay. been working on right. some, some faster yeah, stuff but, but, you know, that's but it's still two weeks of, I mean, know, and, like, and, and, and your enthusiasm can die in that time you know oh yeah. no I don't want to do the video oh, I've got another idea for another project so you put that on hold for a little bit oh, I'll do it next week and then next week never happens right. You know? right 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 and kind of thing so if I can have somebody whose job is to actually finish things because I'm not a very good finisher <laughs> I get highly distracted and you know think of something else to do right um, oh yeah exactly that's then, I mean that's know, and that's good yeah. um yep that's good to have you know a lot of a lot of things up in the air at the same time and if there's other people kind of helping you along mm. with that that's I mean when you think about like company structures as well that's effectively what you're doing right you you, you know when you have yeah, a, yeah. a oh, company totally. that has multiple product lines there's people on each product, and they're all kind of managed. There's a manager that try and sequences everything, and then everybody's working on their own pieces. You try and get it all together, and it's it's that's the tough part. That's the hard part about getting getting a project together. So, and the 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 problem is is that I don't give a shit enough. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. To be quite frank, like it's because this is my show. This is my dog and pony show, right? Mm-hmm. If I go, oh well, I don't care if I finish that or not. You know, there's no pressure. You know, nobody's telling me to do it. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, like I don't care. I just I go onto something new and fun that excites me now. You know, and I don't care if I. Well, I do care, but you know, not enough to actually grind down and do the work. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Whereas I mean, yeah, if, man, you know, it's... if somebody's job is to finish things, then, you know, it's, it's different. <laughs> this is what differentiates me doing professional electronics work at a company and working on my own. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've got a deadline and people are expecting me to do it and I'm being paid to do it and so, so I do it. Yeah. You know, whereas working, whereas doing it for yourself, hobby projects just never, you know, you've got to have a lot more discipline. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Well, that's why that. that's why so, projects can linger for such a long yeah. time. You know, they yeah, fall absolutely. in and out of favor, and you know, there's other things that come yep. up. And yep. Yeah, but I mean, on the other side, you know, the doing it for money. I mean, that that changes things, right? I mean, like I was talking to my wife about this the other day. You know, we were just talking about like I forget how it came up, just like things that we do for fun, right? And she's like, right. "Well, you know, you used to work in electronics for fun when you came home from work. You know, it's like." Yeah, well, I do that all the. T- I mean, I, I still do that. It's still fun, but it's just like it changes the nature of it. And actually, I so I was just hanging out with uh, uh, Chris and Alicia White, and and we were talking about that too. Just like the you know, like we know that like you know, 
for the podcast or for other things, it's like, yeah, of course, we do stuff outside of day jobs and everything else. But at a certain point, you know, sometimes that can really start to wear on you. And mm. and I've talked to I've talked to um, I remember I used to work with engineers and I wondered like, well, why don't why aren't they doing stuff at home? You know, why don't they have hobby projects at home? It's like, well, sometimes it's just you know, at the end of the day, if it's depending on how taxing the day is and, and you know how deep the technical content is during the day. Sometimes you want to go ride a bike or, you know, go to the gym or, yeah, that's you know, right. yeah. walk, take a walk. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> there's just other, you know, like it, it is kind of a balanced thing as much as anything else. So mm. can't fault people for that. Totally not. And that's the issue. Like to me, this is still my hobby, you right, know, right, so, right, right, right. you know, it's, it's, it's unsurprising that I don't take it with the professional attitude that I should. Right, because this video blog is is basically a complete extension of my hobby. Yeah. So I'm just going to dick around, and if I finish it, I finish. If I don't, oh well, you yeah. know, put it on the back burner. You know, right, right. who cares, right? Well, it'd be <laughs> interesting it. to see if your new your new compatriot uh, yep. agrees with that. And, yep. Yeah, it, it could take quite a few months to like. You know, you can't expect things to happen. You know, overnight, it's got to. Yeah, well, it's got to take some months. But anyway. <laughs> that's that's the core idea, you know. Th- there's a lot of people who thought, you know, I oh, just be, you know, cleaning up around here and stuff like that. Well, no, you know, that's, you know, two percent of it. I yeah. think, you know, the the whole idea is that they can finish things that I don't, right? Um, for whatever reason, and then hopefully finish things equals better videos or more technical content. Yeah. So, right, right, right. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say that, oh, why don't I, you know, do cool projects like Mike does on his videos, for example? Well, because that's his day job is to produce those <laughs> and he makes spin-off videos from those projects that he does for his day job. Yeah. Well, you know? and that is, so uh, I mean, that. being able to work or in the open in, has Or a, has insert a... other blogger here, yeah. you know? It's yeah. like, yeah, it's just a different, it, it, it's just a different ball game. Right. Mm. Well, that's good, man. I I can't wait to see what pops out of it. I have to say, so. <laughs> well, hopefully, it works out for the good. Yeah. So, that's the idea. If we don't try, then you know, never get anywhere. And yeah, I'll just stagnate like I am at the moment. Yeah. Just you know, yeah, occasionally getting a decent technical video out, but even then, they're not really in depth because I don't have enough time to do them. So. Yeah. Hmm. It's all good. So did we talk last week about so we actually I think we tweeted with the guy but did we talk about the risk risk 5 processor that open source I think we had mentioned it back in the day but did we actually end up mentioning that last week uh, I kind of recall talking about it a bit Did we? Oh, okay. Never mind then. <laughs> yes, I think we yeah, I think we mumbled something about it. Okay. Well, anyway, in what case is this we didn't, I, I was going to mention. Oh, was it on Twitter? I it was think on Twitter, was I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, okay. They, so right. we had talked about it a while back. There was this open source risk processor, but basically there was a bunch of uh, proceedings that we were supposed to talk about last week from – they had a, actually a conference back in January. And the videos aren't online yet, but you can see some of the slides. And it's just interesting seeing, you know, like what actually is getting uh, focused on, you know, when you have this, when like – I don't quite know the motivations behind it all in the first place because you think about the cost of, of uh, you know, machining it or not machining it, uh, getting a chip manufactured in the first place. But, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. but like you know, the specs are available now, and you can kind of start going into that and seeing, uh, you know, the user manual, manual and the cores and stuff like that, and seeing what so some of the instructions. So it basically that is. exists as a soft core. Is that, um, is that the current state of it? I don't know what the current state of it is. Uh, <laughs> like, most... can you actually buy a chip with this core in it? Oh, I no, 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 no. I, no one's I making assume, it yet, right. you know? So it's a core. So it's a soft core, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, so yeah. I mean, it is... I mean, everything starts, I suppose everything starts as a soft core, and eventually yeah. then it, it gets put into, you know, hardware and actually made. What is, what is the goal of this? I mean, I thought ARM owned practically everything. What is the advantage of this uh, HISC R5 processor? Well, I think the same it. reason as any other open type project is just more visibility yep. and less more I mean, visibility. Yeah, I mean, if ARM do, is do we need that though? I mean, is like that because that can have its downside too. 
I mean, if nobody, you know, it ends up like KiCad kind of thing. If nobody takes the bull by the horns and goes, right, this is the definitive thing here. You know, if everyone's like sub branching the bloody thing off or whatever, then nobody's going to have a standard core. Uh, right? Yeah, somebody I mean, has to I, take I guess, the bull yeah, by the always, horns. Yeah, there's always that trade off between you know uh, having a common ground. But I think the problem there is, and I th- usually, usually from the, the motive, and I'm not sure if that's the one here, but usually the motivation for that kind of thing is. You know, if you have a, a central gatekeeper like that, you know, who watches the Watchmen type of thing? Like, there's no yeah. saying that there's, there's anything wrong, right? But but basically the idea is that open is always uh, better in that kind of case because then people can build on top of it if they want to. And you oh, can... Well, they can, but it's not better from a practical point. It's not necessarily better from a practical point of view. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think... Right? Of... If, if you want to get something done, I'm not going to choose an open core processor, right? I'm just going to choose a a proven, you know, processor out there that I can buy a chip. Yeah, right. But you're not... Right? You're building... You're developing, right? And this is on the research side, right? We've had that talk before. Oh, fair, yeah. So I, I consider this more of an academic thing. Yeah, I know what it is. And, and, and if you look at the... It'll have a real... Yeah, and if you look at... Practical. The region... It's the copyrights by the regents of the University of California. So there's definitely an academic side in all of this, so... Right. Yeah. Yep, yep. But uh, I mean, that's it's, where it stems. From, I think right? for for listeners, it's interesting just to see how this stuff does get spec'd out. Seeing some of the instruction set and just you know like digging into this stuff in the first place, you know, especially people like uh, hard hardware architecture type stuff. It's yeah, it's interesting. You know, it's it's oh no, I totally it, it's totally cool. Yeah. Um, from a practical point of view, though, I don't quite see the well everything. Everything starts the somewhere, right? I mean. Oh what, yeah, ARM is totally. from Acorn, and Acorn was what twenty years ago or something like that. I mean, like it was. It's yeah, not but like, it was commercial. Right, it was commercial. You're right. Yeah, but I don't know. I think this is an interesting mm-hmm. in between, right? It's like you have the commercial side, which is profit driven. Then you have like the the this side, which is you know more like knowledge driven, and and you know there's I'm probably should, should say there's profit in there eventually, but but then there's also like the standard side. You could say, well, what if we all got a committee together and standardized, and it's like, well. Yeah, but we want to make it at some point, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, then you may as well go buy a commercial one. Yeah, it's, right, right, right. By yeah. default, it's standardized. Yeah. And what? See, like, and there's multiple flavors of this. There's the open risk as well, which I think is a different thing, right? Which is yet another open core risk processor. Uh, I don't know. I'm on the open risk info page here, and there's an open risk 1000, and uh, yeah, it's a. Open cores, it's part of the open cores community. And once again, here's another open source risk processor. And well, how is that different from this risk V? Or sorry. No, oh, here we go. Well, number 11 risk on the uh, risk uh, five fa- uh, frequently asked questions is why not open risk <laughs> or MIPS? <laughs> right. And they said oh, there you go. open risk has condition codes and branch delay slots, which can comp- complicate higher performance implementation. Basically, it's like, you know, if you take it as an academic exercise, there's always going to be limitations. So I think it starts oh, from scratch totally. kind of thing. Yeah. Open Risk has they a fixed 32-bit. Like right. Yeah, right. Right. right, there, right, right. There, there's a few people who didn't like the Open Risk. <laughs> they went and did their own one, and there'll be right. people who yeah. don't like either, and they'll go start another one. Right. You know, and like, <laughs> which is great. You know, from yeah, an academic I mean, point of view, fantastic. Yeah. Right? Well, I, I guess I guess the question is when when should that not happen? Right. I think it's always it's always an option mm. to happen. I think the you know, it's probably not going to be a direct competitor arm right now, but maybe if there's take up in the future, that could be kind of thing. And maybe you know, but I'm I'm going to make a call here. Oh I'm yeah, you love making I these like calls. Going, yeah. I love going out on the limb. Yeah, right. Within right. the next, within the next decade, uh huh, we will not see. <laughs> <laughs> we will not see an open core processor commercially. You won't be able to buy one on DigiKey. Okay. Yeah, duly noted. DigiKey's the benchmark. DigiKey's Digi- Digi- the, the benchmark. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't know. Maybe it is easy to actually. Someone will prove me wrong because they'll manufacture ten chips and they'll get DigiKey to stock it. Dave was wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, know, you know, you don't have to go that far just to get Dave to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Because there's already. Like how many go to DigiKey and type in, you know, processors, right? How many variants are there already? Yeah. I mean, do we need another open, you know, like what advantage is the open core one going to have? 
I hate. Probably not much unless you want to implement it in an FPGA for a specific, yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, softcore application which you need to tweak for some sort of thing. And then it's probably fantastic, right? I can imagine that being great because it's open. You've got the VHDL, you've got the Verilog or whatever, and you can tweak it to your own requirements. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. right? That's that's here's that's what I, here's what I know. The, you that's say, where the value is. You, you said ten years out. I had a recent experience where <laughs> I I was reading. So I really like the book, The uh, Innovator's Dilemma, which is a Clay Christensen book, right? No, I know. I've never mentioned it on here before. Right? <laughs> uh, I tried to read that. It wasn't. I gave up. I didn't like it. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. No. So. Yeah, and so people... Maybe, have, maybe all the good stuff is at the end. Uh, yeah, I mean, perhaps. it's just kind of interesting as a case study. It's just like patterns yeah. that have existed over and over and over again, right, in, in business. So yep. like, yep. so it was always, you know, businesses, like, they, he used hard drive manufacturers and then, like, uh, the, back row right. yeah, manufacturers, yeah. stuff like that. Basically, like, yep. if you're trying to make better and better stuff for smaller and smaller group with higher margins... So maybe scopes could be a the good example. The high-end CAD tools, the cadences and yeah. all that sort of yeah, stuff. CAD is tools a, is good you too. Know. Um, yeah. Basically, your market keeps shrinking, and then people always come up from the bottom, right? So like in scopes, it would be like the regals of the world, right? And in right. CAD tools, it would be like the uh, the KiCads of the world, if you, you know, or right. the upverters, yeah, yeah, or the yeah. you know, or the the yeah, dip trays, yeah. stuff like Any that. Of the e- other. Eagle yeah. too, as well, right? I mean, like all of the the lower cost that kind of moved its way up in the the, mm-hmm. the value chain, and. And so I'm reading this book, and or sorry, I I'd, I'd read that book a long time ago, and I really I really do like it. And I I do recommend it, even if it's a little dry for Dave's taste. Uh, and so I was I was getting on a plane, and I wanted a book to read, so I bought a Kindle book, which is out of character for me. But I was, I had remembered that that I had heard Clay Christensen on some podcast, and he was promoting a new book. I thought, and blah 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 blah. And so I'm like, oh, I'll go and buy it. And I, the only one I could find was the Innovator Solution. And I'm like, cool. Let's let's. There must be the the follow on to that old one. That's great. All right. And I start reading it on the plane, and I get like two or three chapters in, and he starts talking about all of these new innovations in cell phones, and <laughs> and and it was like. Oh, and the Palm Pilot does this, and the BlackBerry does that, and and Nokia <laughs> never saw what's coming. Blah blah. And I'm just like thinking to myself, I'm like, what the hell is this guy talking about? And it, and then I finally went and looked, and it, I think I had searched on Amazon, and I saw that there was a reissue on 2014, but it actually was published <laughs> right. in 2003 before the iPhone came out. And it's yeah, just yeah. like, man, that was 10 years ago. You just don't see this stuff coming, you know, like. No, no. People nobody s- saw the smartphone. Nobody yeah, exactly. saw smartphones. Not, not in this. Right? The way, I mean, people say they they saw maybe, it, and maybe some people yeah, did. Yeah, and you can always uh, yeah, point to no, people that predict no. everything, and yeah, oh, some of that's going to be right. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, we're talking about ten years from now, and we're talking about technology. And it's just like, man, I don't even know why we bother sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It's just like, holy crap! You know, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was crazy. <clears throat> Uh, but actually, the the second book, you know, once you get past the fact that it's written in 2003 <laughs> and Palm is yep. pointed out as this great company working on uh, smartphones, uh, it was it was kind of an interesting it, – it, it is an interesting read because basically it's the idea – it's it's taken it from the other side then uh, uh, of, like, how do you actually prevent this kind of thing? And, like, how do you – how do you actually go and design products and not get caught by all of the problems that he talks about in the – the uh, innovator's dilemma. So it's uh, you buy a sta- use established off the shelf processes instead of yeah, that's response. what it is. Yeah, Dave, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, you know, hey, this is a practical thing, right? This is a real world decision as a designer, as a product designer, you've got to make. Uh, you know, you're saying like, don't use open cores. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's no. It's like a, a what processor you choose is a real design decision, or what chip you use can come back and bite you big time. Oh yeah, man. That's a that's like oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's, it's like uh, <laughs> we've talked about this. It's like it's time. like uh, picking your kid out of a lineup instead of just having a kid, right? <laughs> 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 Yeah, as as we've said, sometimes it's better to have, have the choice thrust upon you by a company. You know, they yeah, they I tell mean, you you must use this. That's it. End of story. Right, right. You know, yeah, and you, you know, go, at okay, least cut well, down on the, the design the the decisions that you <laughs> yeah, have to yeah. make and the regret you have later. You have someone else to blame <laughs> it on. That's right. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. 
So you're talking, yeah, like this is interesting about predicting the future and all that sort of stuff. Like I can, I think I can pretty confidently predict it's not going to be another processor architecture that wins the future. It's going to be something else entirely. Be it a form factor, be it a, a, a usage, you know, and, and implementation solution. Or I don't know, I'm kind of talking out my hat, but like there's already a hundred different processors on the market, right? Just having another core, a different core that, you know, tweaks this and eh, tweaks that is is nothing. You know, it's just noise. Yeah, I mean, it could be things you know, like, I mean, I just because of the ubiquitous nature of having processors, it's just maybe a better communication between them, right? Shared, some kind exactly. of shared memory, architecture. It could be a new serial protocol. Yes. Yeah, it could be, it's got to be something else. It's got to be which I can't think of because otherwise I'd be able to predict the future, yeah. <laughs> which I can't. So, you know, I, I, I just know what it's not going to be. Right. You well, know, the, yeah. the future is not going to be yet another processor architecture. Right. You know, that's just, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's of insignificance, you know. Yeah. Like, like the smartphone, right? The smartphone revolution was not the fact that they used ARM processors in there. Right, although that's what ninety five percent of them use. Right, that that didn't enable it. What enabled it was the fact that you know it was they designed it. You know, the screens got bigger. The yeah, the process got bigger, but they designed it as an app centric. You know, like a generic computing platform yeah, kind of thing right, that could right, run right. apps. That was the that was the killer thing. It was the apps which nobody saw coming. Well, I mean, I think the screen. Actually, I was listening to something about it was back when CES was going on. One of the things they talked about was like. Just like the importance of glass these days, like, like not the device, but like the actual, like you know, like yeah, yeah, when the, Corning comes yeah, out with a new the, type of glass, yeah, yeah. like everybody pays attention because yeah, it's that's, so that's 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 bendable, critical. you know, and doesn't break. And, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. Absolutely, it's actually a material science um, thing which saves the day, and that that could be the future, you know, because somebody comes out with this great form factor which everyone loves. It could be the form factor yep. that becomes the new killer feature. You know, I, it's got to be something else. It's not going to be the mundane stuff that us poor electronics designers work on daily. Yeah. Hmm. If only we were smart enough. <laughs> well, I mean, so, um, I don't know, this... I don't know if you're interested in this book at all, actually, but it's it's kind of interesting from the... the... <laughs> well, it sounds out of date, dude. What's that? <laughs> it sounds out of date. <laughs> Well, it's a little out. Of, no, but I mean, like, it's like general. I, it's some people don't like Clay Christensen either. That's fine, whatever. Um, but the interesting thing about it actually is like the when he talks about you know how do you actually prevent all this, and it's like sometimes you have to start right. over, right? And like, so if you have a big company and you're making you know you're making a bunch of money on something, you basically have to kind mm-hmm. of. You have to like you have to be like no, we're just gonna start chasing a new market and try something different and ignore the old stuff and that that can just be well you can't ignore the old stuff that's almost gets you doomed to failure because well, you've got yeah, to have you a mean, cash you cow somewhere you know you've got to have right? that you don't necessarily yep, yep. and yeah yeah exactly yeah. I don't know. Hmm. It's hard to see that though, right? I mean like I don't know like have you ever were you ever having like skunk work projects anything like that? Oh, nothing comes to mind. No. So we, I, sorry, I've tried a couple, like you know, very very low level skunk work stuff at, at past jobs. You know, just like, like a, more like a Google twenty percent time idea where it, you know, and that's tough and hardware. Mm-hmm. And I think we've talked about that on the show way back in the day. And it's hard to do because it like because of the context switching and everything like that. But ultimately, I fe- it feels like those are the things where, you know, you're designing something because you want to try out something new, and then oh crap, what is this? You know, this new thing that kind of pops out and maybe it'll it'll hit a new marketplace and you could try it's the google model isn't it they just throw crap against the wall and see what sticks yeah i mean they they have so many projects they just go yeah we're gonna fund every single you know wacky idea and you know yeah well some of that's transitioned over we'll buy every wacky company with an idea right right and (laughs) yeah and see which one wins right right yes i don't know that's and that's not a bad way to do it yeah, you know, well, you, um, you get past some of the... One of my favorite uh, pundits, actually, um, uh, says, what should Yahoo... You know, Yahoo's like going down the toilet, right? Uh-huh. What should Yahoo do, right? Because they just got like $50 billion from the sale of um, 
Alibaba, right? Because oh, yeah, they own yeah, yeah. Alibaba, right? So they're you know they've got like fifty billion dollars sitting in cash or whatever, right? And yet Yahoo as a company does nothing, right? They're just you know they they they're so out of the game, nobody cares, right? right? And what should they do with all that money? And I'll link in the article, um, and he says what they should do is become the capital investment firm. In Silicon Valley, right? Literally put money into, Ugh. like, fund every single no. startup that comes along. That's a terrible <laughs> fund idea. Fund every single one of them, you know? And bingo, you're going to end up with, you know, some nope. winners. No, it's called... Well, it's better than pissing away your money, which well, I like. Well, yeah, maybe. maybe. Or giving it... Yeah, I mean, giving you know, it all to I, share I, investors or whatever. I don't know, man. Why? That's, that's... Why, why, is that, why is that not a good idea? Like... Maybe not funding every single, you know, I've got a free energy device, yeah, you know, let's, right, right. Yes, let's do that. I've heard right? about that, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> we can end the show yeah. with that, maybe. Um, and, you know, not, you know, don't be that reckless, but, you know, they could be like the number one funder in all of Silicon Valley. They've got that much cash. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't and know, And why man. not? Why is it, why? It's called, why is well, that, that not that, a good that, idea? That is actually, an, uh, that's, that's called spray and pray, right, where you, you fund everything and then you hope... Yeah, but things. I'm not saying. Yeah, I'm not saying just rely on prayer, right? I'm saying, yeah, do some due diligence. Right? I don't know, man. If you but, just give away that much money, like honestly, if you give away that much money, yeah, but they're going to piss it away anyway. That's the point, right? Well, maybe if that's your companies sure. like that, a huge company like Yahoo is is always been like just you know like a loser for the last you know, fifteen years <laughs> or whatever, right? I mean, come on, who uses a Yahoo? product right hardly anyone yeah right who who uses yahoo as a bloody search engine or or whatever it used to be a you know yeah yeah no like, I, yeah, nobody, I get it i get it, I get right? it. um well i do i use uh flickr which is owned by yahoo right. but still you know like uh, anyway i don't know spray so and I think pray, it, yeah spray right? and is the thing but yeah I, I i would i would compare them more to like so if you're that big it's more like like the gates foundation so like the gates foundation a really good thing again they're funding tons of interesting stuff but it's still you know a ton of stuff but not everybody right if you fund if you give well, everybody no, money I'm you're... Not, yeah i'm not saying everybody but uh, you know yeah but they can become the number one I guess so. Right? I just, it's just like the Gates Foundation is the number one, uh, you know, philanthropy um, organization in the world. Yeah. Right? I don't kind of think there's uh, that many good ideas out there. <laughs> I don't know. No, there's... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No, there's not. But you can at least... Why is it at least not attempt to yeah. do that? What else would you do with all that money? Put it in a savings account? <laughs> <laughs> a savings account, yeah, that's going to maximize shareholder yeah, return at half know. a percent. I mean, of course, that's you not know, an actual like... answer, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I think it's not a bad idea. I, I, I mean, think maybe it's, like you I know, buy, it's good. like do like the the Elon Musk thing, you know, put some stuff in space or something. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. That's they're startups, right? You've right, got to fund right, that, right? right. It's, it's starting from scratch, right? Elon, like Tesla, started from scratch. Yeah. Solar City started from scratch, yeah. I believe. Anyway, uh, that SpaceX was a started from this, scratch. Yeah, with someone else. Oh uh, well, you know, yeah, maybe I think a couple not a good of them were. You know, Space yeah. Ends, you yeah. know, SpaceX started from scratch. Let's hire one person, right? Yeah. Let's hire two, yeah. five, yeah. twenty. You know, like, uh, yeah. I don't know, yeah, man. I, I don't know. know. I don't know. Fifty billion bucks could buy you a Mars shot, <laughs> right? Speaking fifty billion bucks could put people on Mars. Speaking of Mars, I, yes. I applied. I don't know if they're going to actually let me do it, but uh, the, the next week, NASA is having a bunch of people over to their the facilities, and I applied to 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 possibly go. There's there's a Cleveland facility. I don't know if you knew that. It's called. Oh no, I had no idea. Yeah, NASA had a facility it, yeah, in Cleveland. It's called the NASA Glenn Center. <laughs> I assume they bought it for the price of a VCR. <laughs> No, <laughs> it's been there a long time. Actually, it's pretty, pretty. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't what know. What do they do in Cleveland? What What does NASA do in Cleveland? Uh, they do a lot of microgravity stuff. Uh, and then yeah, there's. Cool. I know. Right. I knew someone who was in the la- the laser group out there. Um, so they do like laser research as well. I mean, like freaking space lasers. <laughs> space yes. lasers, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Why is the top of my Star head warm Wars right shit. now? <laughs> oh, they, they, they is that where is that where a trillion is that where how many hundreds of billions did they spend on the Star Wars program? Did uh, Reagan spend on Star Wars? Oh, I don't know. Is that the one that's supposed to knock missiles out of the sky? Yep, this is way before you were born. Yeah. I think. Yeah, Reagan. Yeah, famously. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I don't know. Here, yeah. You know, here's uh, poor old Gorby, right? Gorby. Gorbachev. Gorbachev yeah, you know, yeah. he's once again, he's before your time, says, hey, let's get rid of all nuclear weapons. And Reagan <laughs> goes, yeah, I'd love to, but I want Star Wars. <laughs> so, no, deal's off. We're going to fund Star Wars. Yeah, thanks for saving the earth, you dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then they poured, I don't know, like a trillion dollars into Star Wars. And, it, yeah, they just went, yeah, it doesn't work, you know. Mm. So, I don't know. I've... And now it's coming back again because they are shooting, you know, drones out of the skies with freaking lasers now, huh. you know. So maybe it was like, you know, 30 years ahead of its time. Um, freaking laser beans, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I tell you, space lasers... <laughs> That's some 80s history Space lasers are not uh, what I'm actually scared of. Uh, it's actually the... Uh, <laughs> The robots. Uh, did you see this? <laughs> the robots Did you see up. this new uh, Atlas robot from Boston <laughs> I, Dynamics? I, 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 I don't think I dare to look. No. Oh my god. I, I, so basically, no, is bef- it creepier than the, the the spider than the big spidery one? Oh no! This is the one that's actually like a bipod, like a stand up robot. And All right. uh, before it, they they used to show there was a bunch of videos like and it was like tethered to wires and stuff like that. But now, yeah, yeah, right. Now they got rid of a bunch of the stuff. Now it's, and it's autonomous, battery packed, right. and yeah, it's there's yeah, like yeah, there's video of it doing like the uh, the Karate Kid thing and ah right, doing the crane technique. Yes, right. <laughs> uh-huh. I can't. I just can't even imagine like the the systems that are required for all this stuff. Like if they're all individually control we I, I don't think we'll ever get a boston dynamics person on the on the show that is allowed to talk about it mm. but i mean just like thinking about like the control well, system well they bought by didn't google buy them? yeah google owns them now yeah well maybe they're a bit more openy maybe now. yeah 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 uh, so maybe we should try and get someone on why do these robots always go so slowly their arms are moving slowly like this as if I'm lifting my legs slowly. Is it? What is this a limitation of the hardware? No, or is it I'm sure. Well, that's just thing, because like, it looks a bit more dramatic. Well, have you uh, ever looked at like the um, the reverse kinematics that have to be calculated for like robots like this, like six axis robots? Yeah, but yeah, but we've got freaking processors that operate. 20 zillion gigahertz. And yeah, right, right, right. But when you think about it, okay, so like, that, that might be for a single arm, right? But then the whole rest of the body. They're whacking a thousand processors with a. Yeah, maybe, maybe, it's just, maybe it's just for say, I don't know, man. But but uh, it's. This thing is, is <laughs> crazy creepy looking. So uh, I just can't help it, you know, like the, the creepiness factor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I don't think it looks as creepy as. Uh, no, not this one. Petman is the one that actually usually creeps me out. But uh, I don't know. Robots just, they're awesome, but they're, yeah. they're creepy to me. <laughs> but yeah, this, oh, so this goodness. is going to be used for the uh, the DARPA challenge as well. So basically this is okay. this is uh, the hardware that gets programmed, I believe, now by a couple teams. Yeah, the robotics, uh, DARPA's robotics challenge finals on the 5th and 6th of June. So right. Cool. That's... That's bonkers. I love. It. I mean, that, that. I mean, that's really cool, right? That's that's like a really good use of a lot of that stuff. Is, I mean, you can always have doomsday scenarios with robots and yeah, yeah, yeah. murdering humans. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's good stuff. You know, yeah, yeah, you have to love it as a as a you know as a nerd. You have to love robots. It's it's compulsory. Yeah. Yeah, man. Because there's just so much hardware and and uh, you know and algorithms that go into it and control system, c- control theory, yeah. and everything oh yeah, else, the control you know, theory especially. Just... Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's I mean that's the stuff too. Like like I feel like I like over time I've developed a slightly more intuitive feel for control system for control theory, but like the actual yeah. See, I've never held that. I've never been a you know it, it's something that I've never had a good feel for. You know all that control system theory stuff. I've never well, been really I, I good at more that. I mean, the in- intuitive side of things, just like how things respond and stuff like that. Mm. Just like you know, like like PID delete loop type of stuff. But then right. when I think about the math involved and like doing Z transforms when you get into the digital domain stuff like that. Oh, if you want to do it properly, yeah. If you want to go into the deep theory of it, which is required for a lot of practical. Yeah, right. A robot's then, not yeah. going to just do it by f- feel or like. No, you know. no, you can't. Yeah. You can't go on. On DigiKey and buy a you know a robot PID control chip, you know mm. it just doesn't you know it yeah. just doesn't happen. Right, right. Everything has to be tailored for your particular bot. Yeah, 
So, yeah. Well, anyway, so it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that. We'll have to keep an eye uh, on the on the calendar for for June when they when they have that that crazy ass contest. <laughs> oh, hang on, I have to watch this video on this uh, on the page because it's got a speech from Kennedy. It's showing some Cold War nuclear stuff. Oh, I love that sort of thing. Yeah, the historical yeah. stuff. Gets yeah, that, that's one of your... my. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. yeah, I'm a big nuclear history. Oh buff. yeah. If people don't, oh yeah, people don't know. No, I'm fascinated by nuclear history. I've read dozens of books on huh. uh, nuclear weapon uh, theory and 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 design and the history of the physics behind it and all that sort of jazz. Yeah, interesting. So what? Yeah, what about yeah, it? It's one of my. I just find it. <laughs> I just find it fascinating. It's you know, it's it's one of the greatest achievements. Um, you know, uh, it's one of the greatest technical achievements of all time. You know, go. Go read Richard Rhodes' book, The Making of the Atomic Bomb, right, which is the complete history of, like, actually developing and making the first atomic bomb. And, you know, as a as a nerd, you can't help but think, well, that was, you know, one of the greatest achievements of all time. Yeah. Hmm. It's fantastic. You know? I'll have to and, check that out. Yeah, that's, I, that's, I mean, that yeah. sounds like an interesting mix of... It, it did win the Pulitzer Prize. It's a Pulitzer Prize winning. Oh, book. really? Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. He famously won the Pulitzer Prize for a uh, history for a tech you know, for a hi- history for a nerd um, a nerd book. You could say it. A nerd, nerd book. book. Yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> for a nerd book. Yeah, and uh, like I must warn you, it's like nine hundred pages or something. It's it's big. Wow. You know, it 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 is the complete history. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's it's highly researched. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, fantastic, and he's got tons of follow up books. You know, he's got like. Eight of them or something. I've I've read them all. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely I'll link that in for people too, and I'm I'm gonna probably check that out. That that sounds really cool. Yep. So what else is going on? We're almost, we are out of time, and I gotta go. I gotta go do videos and stuff, man. Oh, you're doing videos? What there? On the road? You're, yeah, you're gonna I, record I, them in your hotel room. I can. I I have been running actually. So I run KiCad and LT Spice on a Ubuntu VM now. So I run, right. I run the Windows version of LT Spice on Wine in Ubuntu, running on a VM on on Mac. <laughs> I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> it's a Windows program running on a Linux box, running on a Windows or running running on a Mac box. Okay, why? Uh, so I <laughs> so I have a consistent experience with my. I have a Windows at home, so that's why. It's it's right. probably silly, okay. but well, yeah, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah, right. Uh, speaking of which, like this on the road thing, you know how you developed, you know, you did a basic version of that portable lab. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I was thinking about that again because I don't have a lab at home anymore. I've got nothing. Oh yeah, okay. Right, I got nothing, and it just like sh- like I was just thinking like the last day or two that I should revisit that, and maybe with the new employee, maybe yeah. we can, you know. Uh, do some, you know, really yeah, you um, and, actually put some money because that needs time and money to put into, right. you know. Like yeah, because you and I right had talked about that as well. We talked about, you know, yeah, developing yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, again, it's not probably going to be something that people really need, but uh, yeah. No, I, I just think it's cool. Yeah. You know, at, at, at the end of it, I'd be happy to get a cool video out of it and something that I could actually have at home and keeps the wife happy. See, because if I just take home scopes and power supplies and sit them on my, yep. uh, sit them on the table in the study, yep. right, like I'm just going to get divorced. Divorced, right? Yeah, right, so, right. This is not going to happen. Whereas if I can have a case that just sits in the cupboard and it's completely, you know, zero clutter yep. is the key. Right, to a exactly. Good marriage, it's, it's your, it's your, it's your go bag for electronics, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, your, yeah. Exactly. A bug, bug out bag. That's what it's called. A bug out yeah, bag. Yeah. It's, it's a bug out bag for you, uh, yeah, uh, doomsday preppers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's good though, because if, if you're stuck and you can't, bag, yeah. and you can't go, right. you can't get into the lab, or if you're just kind of inspired, that can that can put a break. Yeah, you yeah. put breaks or on. Or if it. I just need to do a home at something at home, I need to fix something. Yeah, you know, right, I need right. to do, you know, or I need to just try something. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Like so, I'm, you know, I'm thinking that that's yeah one of the things I'll get the the uh, new mini me to work on. Cool. I yeah, I, uh, I I would be very interested in that. I think the the balance yeah. between the I, I was actually. I was thinking about bringing that with me. I'll probably bring it on in future trips, but uh, it's it's heavy, man. And I see a lot of people in airports with uh, those right. like pelican yeah. cases, but not the not the big one. Yep. And and uh, well, well, it's just the pel- just the case alone. The pelican cases weigh like five kilos, don't they? Uh, just like 
Yeah. Even more? No, more. Uh, so it's usually, more, I think mine think? is like 25 pounds, whatever that is in kilos. So. Oh, 25 pounds divided by 2.2. 2. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow. So 10 kilos. That's that, that, what, 11 kilos. 11.3 kilos. Really? Yeah. That's its. Yeah, man. That's yeah. its dead weight. Yep. That's. Yeah, because wow, I, I looked at the next size weight. up, and the next size up was wow. something like 40 pounds and actually went outside of the size limits of you know, oversized bags. So that's yeah, why if they, right. I went to yep. the smaller size. Ouch. Yeah. See, that, that's the problem. Well, that, that's the price you pay for the heavy-duty nature of it, right? It's, you know, the duck's guts. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. It'll yep. be interesting. So, yeah, I hope, you, I hope you do that. That'd be cool. That'd be cool to see that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's the idea. Right, and man. yes, I had fun with the. Um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I just said I had fun with the free energy. Oh yeah, we'll definitely include Unity that video. That people. was that was fun. <laughs> it's your second second bullshit titled dev- or, uh, video, huh? <laughs> oh no, I've done a few. Oh, a couple. I've done, okay. Uh, yeah, I've done like four or five now. Oh, okay. It's like a series. Yeah, yeah. It's a YouTube yeah. YouTube playlist. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have a YouTube playlist for debunking. Yep. 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 That's good. Yep. Hmm. Cool, man. Well, hey, if people are in the Bay Area, uh, probably South Bay, and they want to come see me, I am giving out T-shirts tomorrow. And uh, so come see me. Say hi. What? Polo shirts? Uh, Polo shirts and T-shirts, actually. So. Oh, right. Choice. Yes. Wow, choice in your swag. That's impressive. Awesome. All right. That's it. All right. We'll We'll be back next week. And uh, potential guest uh, lined up. So I'll let you know. Sweet. See you then. See ya.